Shane breaks the balls. Really haven't got to watch him much on the outer tables. But a lot of movement on the nine right there. Now that one's going to open up, but he is elevated. I think that actually the pink four got in the way a little bit, huh? Yeah, it does look like that. Yeah, Byron Lotfi is a dangerous player. One of them types of players where he probably plays his best pool out of the way, you know, like on the side of the main arena. So this is going to be a big test, but as we often say, he needs to get off to a good start, doesn't he? saw Shane a little bit yesterday, watched him practice, and we visited for a moment or two, and he likes where he's at. He likes the way he's hitting the ball. Actually changed cues before this, this tournament. Went back to a, a cue that he had won many titles with, so, you know, as pool players, a little superstition at times. Tough opening shot. Of course, we'll keep you updated on all the matches, but a very interesting match and, you know, highlighted match there on table two between Filler and Sanjin. Extension, please. <coughs> it's funny to open the show. They talked about Sanjin and 20 years old, but it just was just a few years ago. Filler was in that same point, right? And we were talking about the phenom at, at 19 and 20. Yeah, there's a host of young players, top players as well, which is quite unusual. Yeah. And do you see the difference in today's game? Much more athletic with the younger players, right? Yeah. Stay in shape. Seems like they could be good at many sports. Yeah, pool players take it a lot more serious in the modern era of the game. So this time he does manage to pop the one ball. What but a beautiful cue ball. Sorry, Carl. talked about Shane in the opener and you know I was asked about you know what makes Shane you know his as great as he is but sometimes what what cost him I think sometimes like the Moscone Cup for instance is he really almost over worries about that one mistake he feels like it could cost him and I understand as great as the players are any of us feels like one mistake might sit us in the chair for four or five six games but I think he's got to start to leave that behind so sometimes mistakes are made. SVB knows the importance of these type of racks. He's no stranger to this situation. He's a little bit fortunate on the first shot, but then he's played a couple of good shots. Left himself a little funny on this eight, though, JJ. Yeah, the speed was off there. And the four ball, he kind of wobbled in the pocket. It caught his attention big time. And I don't know if you notice how long he stayed down on that on that six ball, right? Wanted to make sure he hit it a little more pure. And what's made him one of the best forever is recognizing what went wrong. Even in the midst of a match, watch out, cue ball. Should be fine. And then kind of fixing that, that bit of a mistake. Five-time US Open champion SVB takes the first rack. The first man into the last 32. Well, that was Darren Appleton, and I grabbed him. Thank you for a few words. OK. We're so you've seen you winning tournaments over the years. The last few years, you've not really been at the business end of the events. How has preparation been going for this big one? 
Yeah, preparation's been good. I said at the start of this year I'm going to give it 100%, so I'm playing a lot of tournaments, practicing a lot, and I felt my game's been coming, it's been coming. Wasn't really getting the results early in the season, even though I was like playing well. Uh, but you need, as, as you know, you need a bit of luck. Uh, but my results have been getting better and better as the season's gone on. And I just gear up for these big tournaments, like last week in Las Vegas, uh, the matchroom events especially. That's what it's all about for me. So I, I just put 110 percent into these type of tournaments. And uh, my game and my head's in a hell of a lot better place than, let's say, last year. From, let's say, 2016 to last year, my head was nowhere. But now I feel like I can win again, and that's half the battle. Can you believe it's been 10 years since you won this? I can't believe that, 10 years. Yeah, my 10th year anniversary, I thought about it on the way up in the car and I thought, well, I think my game's good enough to win still. It's just, you, obviously, you, you need some luck. You've got to hold yourself under pressure and they're the two biggest things, really. You've got to break good, get a bit of luck and you've got to hold yourself together because uh, for you guys watching at home, uh, the pressure in, in American pool is uh, tenfold compared to snooker and English pool and uh, you might think it looks easy when you're watching it on television but when you're out there it's a lot tougher than what it looks. Yeah well we know you are one of the best under pressure and best of luck for the last two. I've got a sneaky feeling you're gonna go deep. You never know dear, it'd be nice. There's life nice. in the old dog yet. <laughs> Well, JJ. What was, I don't know. Well, we're seeing SVB. Well, he Dude. almost made a good hit. Yeah, I, know, I mean, right. is that allowed to go four rails? Look how close he comes yeah. to the one ball here. Yeah. We're so used to seeing Shane's highlight reels all over social media. And I'm afraid that's what, <laughs> that one will be doing the rounds as well. That was incredible. Yeah. No. I've never seen that. One I haven't either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I've seen a miscue on the break before, but yeah. not a, a a very partial miscue, and really almost went four rails and opened the rack up nicely, really. But can you imagine if it had hit the one ball, made a ball, and run the rack? Then that yeah, would that would have been, been awesome. It may have been a new thing, right? But I certainly hope he. Of course, I'm pulling for Shane. I'm trying to be an impartial in the booth, but of course, I'm pulling for the American players. And, but I sure hope he goes on to win this match, just so I can I can have a nice rib with him about that <laughs> yeah, sure, about right. that break shot. <laughs> well, I have been at a pro golf tournament or two where I saw him top it, the pro golfers off the tee, believe it or not. So, and now, would you entertain the four nine here? This is a little tricky for the five to the six, right? I mean, I think it is. I would have maybe looked at this 4 9 combo. You can see Shane still smiling. He's in disbelief of like, what's just happened? <laughs> well, we all have those first time experiences, even late in our career sometimes, right? So. One of the best breakers pools ever seen as well, Shane. So. Attention, please. Yeah, what really kind of separated himself. I mean, a lot of people, of course, accredit the break. I accredit the break to an extent, but when you hang around him for a while and watch him play match after match, you can tell it wasn't the break that got him those five U.S. Opens, not just the break. Yeah, he does everything so well to Shane. Phenomenal shot maker, great pocketer of the ball, very smart on the pool table. So he needs to hold the cue ball here, does Lotby. And that's okay. Well, he's done well. And it looks like Albin Ocean has advanced over Nicholas de Leon. Got to hang your head high, though. Nicholas uh, looked like he played one heck of a match. Things change here in the final 64. It is a race to 11 now. Lotby would have liked the cue ball to have come over a little bit more just to leave this a, a straight nine, but he's more than capable for this. And it disappears, so what a strange start to rack two. Yeah, you better chalk that one up, Shane. 
Yeah, we still have a, quite a few matches going from the 11 o'clock hour, so those are coming uh, near the end. So we'll certainly get some. Wow, it just came over the top of the ball a little bit. Look how close it was yeah. to flicking the one as well. Yeah, so anyone wondering, you've got to hit the one ball on the break first. If you don't, that's a foul. So if the cue ball would have just flicked the one first, it would have been a legal break. I think so, yeah. I think you are allowed to do it however you want to do it, right? It's just one of the things he's got to just laugh that off. He might <laughs> never do that again in his life. Well, it's one thing he's got to laugh it off, but his opponent's got to take advantage of that, you know, something odd from nowhere. Yeah, because if, if Baron Lotvik can put a bit of a three or four pack, Rack number against three. Shane now, Shane is we not going to be feeling good in that chair. Mr. Lotvik, good break. Well, we can tell that the beginning stages of this final 64 has had a little bit of an effect on a lot of players. I think maybe Darren Appleton is the only one that has just smooth sailed there, right? I mean, of course, Mario had a convincing win, but it, he didn't look that great at the beginning of the match. He had to kind of settle in. There Same thing go. with like Kachi. Kachi started off slow before he came back. Now he's in a, a fight. Alvin Ocean was in a fight with Nicholas De Leon before he kind of pulled away. This table looks okay at first glance. Oh, it looks real nice. You can cue the ball. He's not very thin on the one at all. Easy position on the three. And Kachi in a battle now trailing eight to five. But I, I was super impressed with, with Loho Sum from Hong Kong, how very shaky in his first match on the TV table, right? He goes to the outer tables, wins a match. Now he has to come back to that TV table to where he didn't have that great of a match, right? And he put it together last night with a nice win over a very highly seated David Alcady. So not, not too much of a surprise over there for, with him and Kachi. here. Oh, that's gotten away from him, Carl. He's going to have to come with one here. And what do you think Thank the air there has just got, you know, under hit or over hit? I mean, yeah, that's uh, I'm not sure. I can't, I can't quite tell. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Whatever he's done, yeah, he, it's not turned out good at all. He's nowhere near where he wanted to be. So there's a glimmer of hope here for Shane in this rack. Yeah. You just feel it's a bigger moment for Lotvi as opposed to Shane. Yeah, Shane's wanting to get to the table as quick as possible after that blooper on the break shot. And everything about this seven ball is no good. He's long distance. He's straight. Nothing easy to get on the eight. But if he is to bury it and draws the ball back, could do a lot for his confidence. Wow, sweet stroke there. Wow, look at that ball. Yeah. Looked like he barely hit it, right? Well, that was also a nice shot, a little test up. This will send a little message to SVB. Absolutely.
pool players. Wreck well, number four. That bit. Our current score is two to one in favor of Mr. Lotfi. Mr. Lotfi, to break. Yeah, I kind of put Mika in the same spot as Darren a little bit, right? Trying to get their game back, playing every event they can. Yeah, they're trying to get that, like, almost like that one last big run in a big major. Yeah, well, Mika's had some results now. He's had a few thirds and uh, some seconds and some nice events. Okay. Bit of a mess here with the one ball. A little funny, I think. And the 4 8 that got kind of jammed up there near the nine. So that's going to be a funny situation to, to deal with. I think the one is cuttable, though. Yeah, Mika's actually going to be playing the winner of this table. So that could be an interesting matchup. But SVB's. Oh, he's just been sat there since that blue puff, as you called it. Yeah, that one's already hit the internet, I'm sure. It's all interesting about this. to see, yeah, the four ball, right? Yeah, it's all about this four ball, isn't it? it does it have an angle, though? So you can make something happen. Tell you what, not much around it. I mean, the nine is near, but not the most terrible to come two rails at it right here. I'm trying to lightly open the four eight. You want to hit this lightly, though. Oh, this is going to hurt. Yeah, this is going to hurt and a difficult kick shot. Could be surrendering ball in hand here. Attention, please. Cue ball if he goes off the short rail, the bottom rail, which he just did look at, could go a little close to the left centre. I mean, he could come two rails at it from up the table, but maybe I think that's the way I kick at this ball, two rails. Super nice hit. I like yeah. the speed he put on it too, not losing accuracy, right? Yeah, it was a beautiful shot. Just had to hit the ball in here and just try and stay in this rack. Come up that much and leave an easy kick underneath the seven, but he did get the snooker. He'd love the pink to stay behind that purple five, but wouldn't be surprised if he knocks this in, to be honest with you. Right. Tried to make something happen, didn't he, Lotvi? Unfortunately, well, he's left SVB straight in. Yeah, I'm interested to see. Of course, you can't take anything for granted, but if he takes a little off the next break shot, Carl, that'd be an SVB. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see that. Just having a quick glance around the arena, Jason Shaw's. Just got his match underway. He's playing Evo Hearts from Holland. Niels Feyen, he's won this tournament before. He's also started his match. what Shane needed after that miscue on the break. He didn't want Lotfi to run three or four and make him sit and watch it. So this is very nice indeed. He can forget about the break, 
He's back in the match. Defending champion Albin Ocean. We just saw earlier he's made his way through to the last 32. Let's hear what he had to say. Albin, you've just come off the table. How was that game for you? Uh, it was it was tough. You know, the the beginning was quite tough. He played good. He had some some little roles after the break. I didn't. So uh, he was up 5-3. He had a big chance to go up even more. But uh, I'm glad he made some mistakes, led me back to the table, and I took the lead from there on and won 11-6. Was there any ever any doubt? Oh, well, of course, on, on paper, I was the, the big favorite. Uh, but, you know, with one on the spot, um, it's always tough to say. Um, like I said, he played a good match, but I, I had a better ending. So I'm glad I'm through. Got a few more gears in you yet? Yeah, definitely. At least after this match, I would say approximately two. Probably need one in the next match. I think I played the uh, Norwegian guy, Mats. And I'm looking forward. I think I played tonight. Well, we can't wait to watch you. Well done. Thank you very much. Oh, he speaks very well, does Albert, right, in five, interviews. Mr. Benzo, yeah, no wasted words break. from Albin, that's for sure. He's a guy that he's pretty focused no matter what he does, right? All right, here's after that last kind of something you might not ever see again from SVB. Not backing off the break shot at all. I'm not sure if the two opened up. I think it did. Yeah, he didn't hold back, did he? We think he's gonna take a little bit off it, but shame so I do believe this two ball passes the eight oh that's gonna hurt what's he gonna leave oh he's gonna leave the world it's a poor mistake from SVB and I was just gonna say it's similar to the six ball you had in the opening rack where he really stayed down on the ball longer than I'm used to seeing him uh, Thoughtfully has to take advantage of all of these and then probably put a few together because you got to expect Shane to put a few together. Yeah, this is the mind games of, of professional sport. Shane's going to be sat in his chair now. And it's going to be hard to shake off that miss. And it's all about what Lotvi can do situation yeah he's going to look good in this rack but a three and a four pack in this winner breaks format well it could really make Shane's chair hurt yeah and he's he's really been really good on the tough shots right what if Lotfi really settles in gets control of that cue ball a little bit better we know the break is not the hardest part of this week's tournament so it's a matter of getting some shots after the break, of course, but he should be making balls. All the great events coming up, so many great nine ball events, and uh, I think it's kind of made a few guys a, a, a little bit more motivated, right? Even Neil's fan, you, know, you wouldn't say is like quit the game or anything like that, but he had a little bit of a, a dry couple years, right? Yeah, that's right. And now I think all these players more motivated, more tournaments, of course, bigger purses. And the rankings, I think, is a huge part of it as well. They know they kind of control their own destiny for 2023. out to a 3-2 lead. Well, Ralph Suke, the legend, 53 years of age. Let's see what he had to say. He's in to the last 32. You've won so many tournament titles. I mean, what would a win here mean for you? Well, I mean, a win at the World Championship or World Nine Ball Championship, whatever you want to call it, is definitely still on my to-achieve list, even though I won the 
the uh, World Championships twice, but uh, I still uh, have another big title in me, I feel, and uh, who knows? I mean, it's, it's still a long ways to go. It's only, you know, 32 players or down to the last 32 players, so there's, you know, so many matches to go, and I just see it from match to match, and I don't really think about, you know, winning or whatever. So, I'm, I mean, of course, I, I think about winning the next match, but not what could eventually happen. A huge congratulations and all the best in the tournament. Thanks a lot, appreciate it. Always nice to listen to the Rack Kaiser. Our current score is three what to he's two done in for nine ball Laffey. pool. Well, Mr. Laffey, he's nothing great. short of remarkable. Yeah, and I'm sure that many of the guys out here today wish there was a senior tour, right? <laughs> Let Ralph just go on, go do his thing on the senior tour. He's, he's given these youngsters a lot of headaches. And still trying to win championships. Okay, the ball's breaking a little different in this match, it seems like so far. Nothing, a little more movement on the nine ball. We'll keep you updated on as many of the matches as possible. But a, a definite interesting match going on on table two. Filler and Sanjin. Okay, JJ, what's your thoughts with this one? I think he, Shane's supposed to pass it. I mean, you got to prove this one to me now if I already know a little bit about you there's a few players out there we could we can name that we don't like that they're shooting at this right but until I know different I think I got to pass this shot especially Attention, Shane's please. made a couple of mistakes right you don't want to take on this shot right here as a huge favorite in the match hang this ball and then you know <coughs> get lot a little more time at the table. Got to get it up quick and down quick. May land this on the one. We'll see. How's he going to finish for Shane? Uh, don't think, I don't know if he can play the kiss shot or not. I think he can. Super thin hit on the one to play the pink in the side. Yeah, as long as you hit the lowest ball on the table first, you can make any other ball and you stay at the table. A little bit like that. Now this table here is where the players will use the draw stroke a little more. You know, the, the slick conditions, the fast bed. Instead of stunning over for the two in the lower left, he may draw back for the two on the side, which may be different on some tables. Just feel like this is a, a big few balls for Shane, don't you? Just the way the start of this match has gone. I know that sounds crazy to say in a race to 11. Well, I think you're right, though. I mean, not only to get himself going, but to leave that mistake behind. I talked about it before. I think it's something I've watched with Shane at times. Really can kind of key on that mistake a little bit instead of just, you know, getting on with it. Yeah, and just bumping the nine ball out of the way there has just made this shot a lot easier because if the nine was still where it was, this positional shot can get a little bit funky at times. Now yeah. there's a bigger window, isn't it? I like two rails just like that, especially on this table. I try to stay away from the inside English if I can. to the cue ball nicely there, pulled it back so he's about to tie this match up. There it is.
Rack number seven. We're currently tied at three games apiece. Mr. Van Boning, to break. Can SVB do what he has done many times? Can he get a package together? I actually spoke to him yesterday, did a little interview. He told me he needs to start running fours and five packs. Is this going to be the start of it? He's got an open shot at this two ball and the table layout, well, it looks, looks pretty kind to me. Yeah, he's just got to dodge the purple five, get back for the three, and that's what he did for many years. You know, you've won plenty of tournaments, right? When you win tournaments, it's usually you put four racks, five racks together, maybe even more sometimes to separate yourself in each match. That's a huge part of winning. Yeah, that's what Darren said about his match against Thomas Kaplan. He said he run two four packs, and, well, you're going to take some beating if you keep doing that. Nice stroke there. Key ball's a little hot, but it should be okay. And Max Lechner now breaking is actually at the table shooting up 10 to 9 over Dennis Graves. So he's come back from nowhere. Oh, he's missed the one ball though. So keep you updated on that close one from the 11 o'clock hour. Aloysius Yap has advanced. Attention, please. And a close one over Fabio Petroni. Yeah, he was the runner up in. Last year's US Open, he lost out to Carlo Biardo, so he's making a good showing. He's got to slow roll this, take a little distance on the four, no big deal. Kachi down nine to seven against Lovo Sum. Filler trails four to three against Sanjin. Important for Barham just to stay in the moment here. He's got off to a good start. That's all he could have asked for. Yeah, I've been super impressed with uh, what he's done so far. It's just a matter of getting back to the table, right? Yeah, that could prove to be the hardest part. Plenty of action underway here in the round of 64. It's a race to 11. Plenty of pool going on. Dimitri Youngo just in the distance there. That looked like his table was 10-10. Yeah, he's playing for Chunsky. It is 10-10, so there's hill-hill drama between the two Europeans. I think Loho Sum has just got to the hill against Kachi at 10 to 7. The winner of that table is going to be playing Darren Hampton. There's Jason Shaw. Eagle Eye. He's 3 2 up against Evo Hearts. This is now 4 2, I believe. Yeah. Abdullah Yusuf, 10 9 over Robbie Capito. Rack number 8. Our current score is four to three in favor of Mr. Van Boning. Mr. You Van Boning. Max Lechner advances past Dennis Grave. Back to the main table. Shane will never be accused of soft breaking, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I don't know if he stayed with a thin hit on the one here or not. It's very, very close. Looking kind of down the path of the cue ball towards the one, and I think he can get at it. Yeah, I know you didn't play nine ball pool your entire career, right? But 
Have you ever seen or paid attention to Shane the way he rolls out compared to other players? There's never been anybody I've seen that rolled more difficult. You know, most of us are looking to tie a ball up, get a little form of insurance, right? Yeah. Where he's looking to, to roll out and say, I can do it better than you can. Yeah, he's rolling out into a, like a shot maker's shot. Huh? Right. Even if it's the safety, even if it's like super thin and a ball from distance and running the cue ball safe, he just rarely ever rolls out and ties the ball up. He wants the pressure on that rollout. Very similar to Earl, I think, when Earl was in his prime. I think he's got a simple two rail path to get on the pink and the side, right? Between the, the four and the five, the purple and the pink. Yeah, I believe so. I mean, the four seven isn't the toughest combination, but it sure looks pretty easy to come between the four five to get on the pink for the side pocket, for the middle. Yeah, and even if that kind of overruns position, you can always shoot it into the same pocket as this three. This looks good. Yeah, it looked pretty natural, like he should capture the speed. Loho sums at the table. I don't know if he really has a runnable table, but he's at the table trying to defeat former world number one, Eklitikachi. Okay, he's gonna have to bump the six, it looks like. Anytime you're going into the ball, another ball, it's easy to take your eye off the ball you're shooting, so he's gotta stay focused. Oh, got a lot of the rail there. Over on table two, Sanjin Perlovanovic, who we seen last night against Kelly Fisher on table one. He's playing Joshua Filler. And he's 5 3 up on Filler, but I've noticed when they do play in all the other events, he's, he seems to do well against Joshua. Well, I wouldn't doubt it's, you know. Somebody that's motivated his, or, you know, young career, right? Filler, a guy who hit the scene running, doing very well in big events at such a young age. Is this the start of the big package that Shane often does on pool players? Five threes, open up a two gap lead. And we were talking about a hill hill battle a moment ago. And it was this man, Dimitri Jungo, 11 10 over for Chunsky. He's a happy man, and why wouldn't you be? He's through to the last 32. Max Lechner beat Dennis Grave 11 9. That's a big win. Best mates with Albin Ocean. They travel, they room together, practice together. He's through to the last 32. Yeah. All the big players are making it through, JJ. <laughs> Well, he's trying to also break up that World Cup team of Mario He yeah, right. and uh, yeah. Alvin Ocean, right? I, I know Alvin's going to be there. Come when is that? June, I believe it is. So, Sanjin puts another rack together. Now six to three. Sanjin Ivanovic wins the rack. Rack number nine. Our current score is five to three in favor of Mr. Van Boning. Mr. Van Boning to break. Now Shane's made the one on the side a little more often than most players. He's going to need a kiss on the cue ball to get a shot here. Don't think he's going to get it. Yeah, the push out's going to be very interesting as well. So we're going to get to see what 
my colleague was talking about a moment ago. Because where do you roll to here? Yeah, he may have to roll to some type of kick or jump here. I I'm not sure. And this is a very unique situation as far as rolling out with the balls clustered the way they are. And what he's going to do, he's going to push out to where you can't really hide the one, but you have to have a real good touch sending the cue ball safe somewhere if you're Lotfi. Right? I mean, he can't really get the one in a safe spot. Lofty, you're so it's all about, you know, are you going to be the one to take on this shot and get the cue ball safe? Well, there you see, Lotfi's having a good look. He's got the option to play this shot or pass it back. Shane did look at playing a 1-2 combo. I mean, I know that's thin, but he did, he did have a look at that. I don't mind the pass here because, like, again, I think it's hard to protect the one. Even if he does get the snooker, the one may need be near the pocket for a jump shot. That'd be interesting to see how he plays this. You'd like to run the cue ball that way you have touch, meaning a kind of a rolling ball. Maybe go down behind the three. But if you feel like there's a lot of movement on the one, uh, meaning, you know, you, you don't know where it's going exactly, Attention, you may do something a little different here. Like you said, you may play that one, two. I think that's what he's looking at. Either that or he wants to hit about half the two ball to where the one comes up into the middle of the table more and maybe gets a little more chance of a snooker behind the three ball. Yeah, that is an option. Yeah. He want, he didn't want the one over the pocket. I think he's left the pot though here for Lotvin. He wasn't sure where the one was going to finish. I think he's fairly satisfied as far as he didn't leave a hanger, right? Nothing easy. Definitely has a shootable one ball here, though. Stenson, please. Well, Loho Sum hasn't finished that match yet. He was at the table a moment ago, so I figured Kachi put another a beat on his score line and now maybe maybe 10 to 8 now 10 to 7 something like that oh nice shot been pretty solid making them balls especially from distance yeah he has he's played okay hasn't he he's just been froze out the last couple of racks that's why there's a two game lead for Shane they see another look at this one Going behind the six, behind the back, so delicate. Uh, that's not going to get it. No, it's not. Does he take the cross side bank on here? I think he'll be tempted to have a little look. Lay's pretty nice. I think he can stun the cue ball up towards the three a little bit. Well, a high ball says no. He's not banking at it. Oh, he's cutting. I didn't realize that was available. Yeah, he could see enough of the two ball, so that was even worse for Lotve. Pretty confident shot, though, I'll tell you that. Especially because he didn't take much time, right? Just went ahead and decided to shoot it. Stay here for the distance on the seven here, Carl. I mean, the nine ball's a little funny to try and move the cue ball a whole lot. Oh, he's pulling it around the nine. Three rails inside the eight. Didn't catch the third rail. Should be all right.
many a player might have played for the eight in the same pocket as the seven, though. I don't mind this, though. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's, yeah. just, it's fine. It's just... I think a, a simple Shane is a pretty scary Shane, to tell you that. He gets very confident pocketing the ball. Catchy bows out Mr. Van Boning. This year's World Mr. Pool Van Boning to break. Well, this is going to look like this a dry a, break. I was going to say, is this maybe the first I've seen on the TV table? Besi besides the miscue? It's our second dry break besides the miscue earlier. Layman, referee for this match, he's from New York City. Looks like he's sending the one ball up table behind the six and the seven, bringing the cue ball two rails behind the nine. The thing about this is you can't really let him see any of it. With all the balls up table, there's a lot of blockers for Shane, even though he's coming from some nine feet away. It's a little different level of pool, right? Would you cut this and use the four to slow the cue ball down and just let the one go over to the left side rail here? Yeah, that looks a nice shot. He's just making sure. Just looking to see if he overeats the one, what kind of jump shot he might leave. Benton, please. Yeah, a lot of times from from this distance, instead of hitting the ball with a certain type of speed, you'll you'll use the four to slow the cue ball down. Uh, he's left a clear shot, maybe not a makeable shot, but definitely a look at the one. Yeah, this was his concern, wasn't it? This is what Shane was looking at. Doesn't look like he can cut that in the middle, does no, it? No, so no. Pretty easy safety if you know the shot. Extension, please. You kind of bank the one back and forth and run the cue ball two rails back up towards that cluster off the left side of the one here. Maybe the cross corner goes. Yeah, like that. A bit of a two way as well. Yeah, it was a smart shot from Lockville, and it's worked out very nice indeed. It wasn't far from making that cross corner as well. It would have had shape on the two. Bank this away, or you try to edge it and run the cue ball. Oh, how good was that? How controlled was that? Really nice hit on the one. hit a little unlucky not to contact another ball there up the table it's going to leave Shane a little easier opportunity on the safety side of things 
maybe, maybe banks this cross, cross side. Tries to follow his ball back towards the five ball. I doubt it. All ball fouls, so John Lehman on top of things here. There's a lot of balls up there, isn't there? Good things can happen. Yeah. And the difference, you know, in the in the upper echelon and the pro level is you could take some levels below the pro level and they run out pretty good. You know, even though, you know, you could say some of your pub players that run out, but grinding out games when the balls don't sit so well, that's a big difference in the upper level. Caught a double kiss. Watch out for the scratch. It's all right. Phil are putting together a few games now. He may have just tied the score at six apiece, somewhere around there, anyways. Yeah, that match is available on the Match and Pool YouTube channel. speed control here and it looks pretty perfect. Could have used an inch more maybe, but I'll tell you we lost a top rated Spaniard last night, but another one's not getting to shoot much on one of the outer tables against Thorsten Holman. Sanchez Ruiz, I don't I haven't seen him at the table yet. Yeah, so far in this round it's the old blood, the legends of the game well, who are they're doing well. Hand. Yeah the Mika, we got Ralph, Thorsten, Darren. Thorsten just recently inducted into the BCA Hall of Fame. Well deserved. I don't know if he got into the cue ball enough there. That was a miss hit on the, the tip position, came up a little bit, and a bad snooker here at six to three from SVB. Uh. Are you in the Hall of Fame, JJ? No, no, the one pocket, but not the uh, BCA. Oh, great shot there. Gonna need the short stick, I believe. That's what he's going for. He's not looked at the kick off the top rail, has he? No, I think the kick is very doable, but the safety on the on the jump shot. I don't know if he can if he has to cut this away a little bit or if he can hit it right in the face. Yeah, I thought he may have to cut it a little bit. May fluke this. Needs it to slow down, and that's not going to be good news. Can he just see an edge? First glance, it looks like he can. Super thin, though. Has he just got to dis be dis not concerned with the cue ball? Oh, okay, he could hold it with a light speed, so a nice shot there. Out. Okay, could have been worse that. Whenever you're crashing into balls like that, you never, you never quite know how it's going to finish up. Spinning this cue ball round off two rails. Thorsten Holman is leading. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz 4 0. Filler and Pearl Ivanovic on table two. That match is 6 6. Copigny, former champion. Great to see the Taiwanese players back after, well, what's been a strange two years. 
He's leading 4-2 over Michael Javniak. Shaw's in the battle. He's leading 4-3. <coughs> over Evo Arts. Neil's fire is trailing 6-4 against a strong Vietnamese player. Making a quality out here. It's going to get, I think, pretty good position on the nine. Yeah, very good position on the nine. And table two's just been a kind of a tale of two matches so far, with Sanjin just sitting filler down for a little while, and now filler's returning the favor. The outside tables you can just see at the bottom of your screen. Nikos Ikonopoulos. Well, Dimitri Youngo won a classic Hill Hill battle before. Let's see what he's had to say. Dimitri, that was a great celebration from you. You looked really happy to win that one. Yeah, of course. After a winning game, uh, I'm always happy, but especially the way. Uh, how it was the match? I was always uh, behind, and uh, yeah, and uh, I was uh, yeah always uh, in the game, but never uh, in front. So uh, it's uh, really special uh, this match for, for me. How do you manage to stay so focused, especially when you're you're behind a lot of the game? Yeah, you have to believe in, and uh, that's why I try. And uh, in the end, uh, yeah, uh, I was also a little bit lucky, but uh, you have to take it uh, when you have the chance, and uh, yeah, so I'm very happy. Here. Top 32, how does that sound to you? Yeah, of course. Uh, last year I was ninth uh, and I want a minimum make the same, but uh, when I'm coming here I want to go very far. So, uh, uh, yeah, now it comes to the next round. I give everything. Yeah. We can't wait. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, Rack good play with Dimitri Youngo. Our current score he's is never won six that to big, four. big title, but he's beat many of the top pool players. Mr. Laffy, is it is weak. Lot me to break, trailing SVB six racks to four. Nice break, good cue ball control. Is he gonna get a shot? Is he gonna get a shot? I think it goes. Yeah, he's in a great position. Ideal with the cue ball, as Carl said, right in the center of the table. Nice track on the one ball. Two rails up near the head string for a little cut with the three near. Very doable run uh, if he gets past this, this first one ball. Got to get a decent position on the three to get to the four, but it's not terribly difficult. Ball in, or is he just gonna? Yeah, I think Top is flirt flirting with a maybe a mistake. Extension, please. With the six fairly handy, I, I like just drawing back here for the five. Even if you have to shoot the six from a little distance, not a problem with the seven so near. Oh, he's going with that high ball, so he's got to hit this clean. Okay, just barely getting by the seven. What I like of what I saw there from Luffy is he didn't really overhit the ball, right? If you overhit that, that ball can arc a little bit, just take a little bit of a different path and have problems. I'm not 
not sure exactly how it happened, but Sanjin got back to the table there. Filler did have a shot. So maybe a bit of a mistake from Joshua. He's done well here. He's letting Shane know he's still in this match. He's not going to go away. You are going to have to beat me, is the message he's sending. I'm not going to give it to you, buddy. So, Lotvi pulls one back to 6-5. and I think We're just going to have a little look at table two. That's where Joshua Filler is playing Sanjin Perlovanovic. Sanjin beat Kelly Fisher late last night to book his place into the 64 stage. Let me see 7-7. Seven, seven. So Phyllis has got a bit of work to do there if he's going to come through this match. Yeah, he's got to get back to the table first off. And even with the winter break format and the one on the spot, it's amazing how prepared all these players are. That's what keeps the matches so close. They take advantage of that one mistake or that one opportunity where you think we may see a little bit more of those 11 threes and 11 fours, but with the players playing so well. Latest results, Albin Elshun, he wins 11-6. Over Nick DeLeon, his interview was very nice yesterday. He was delighted. Lucius Yap, 11-8 over Petroni. He's a dangerous man, just floating along, JJ. Love his game. The first time I watched him play five or six years ago, we have a mutual <laughs> friend there in Dallas. And I was like, look at this kid, kind of like the epitome of uh, what I think is a perfect back and forth swing and, you know, as far as the stroke. And he's, uh, he's another one of those guys keeps to himself, but very astute and very aware of what's going on. <coughs> Shane knows he's got a battle here at six to five. Kopi Chung. Yeah, the brother of Ko Pinyi. Little Ko, as he's known in the pool world. Yeah. He plays a good game as well. Yeah, pound for pound, the best player in the world, I would say. That's Nikos Economopoulos. He's from Greece. He was one of the top Euro European players about 10 years ago. And Probably a little bit like a Darren and a Thorsten and a Mika, you know, just trying to get the way back into the game because of all the jungles that have come along and kind of been winning all the big majors. Well, Nick, Nick is a super big talent from Greece and doesn't quite have the titles that those other names you mentioned, but, you know, if you know anything about pool and European pool, he's a guy that could have had a lot of those titles. It was just hard to win, right? So many great players. Yeah, they're, they're, they're very hard to win. He's been to the semis of the World Nine Ball Championships, this very event when it was out in Qatar. And sometimes it's just not meant to be. Is it meant to be for the South Dakota kid? He got to last 16 last year. The AC five time US Open champion. He won five in 10 years, which is it's pretty incredible. Yeah, and he won them all kinds of ways. One lost side, undefeated. And 
he wants another one of the, he wants this this world pool championships obviously probably a little more than that sixth green jacket as far as the US Open but he wants that as well oh yeah separate himself from the Crack, you know one 12. of his heroes maybe his score, biggest hero Earl of the Pearl in favor of Mr. Van Groning Shalafi to break Latvia's really done well on the break. There's a lot of control in the cue ball. I wouldn't say he's going 100%, but he's putting a pretty heavy hit into the cue ball and still controlling it. So there again, gotta love the look of that. How's this three ball gonna end up? Uh, I don't think offense is an option. He's got a real nice safety. Option he can play here, though, very obvious. Sanjin's still at the table. Filler's looking in trouble. One of the tournament favourites. All right, he's got to work that one ball off the side cushion back to the end rail here, the top rail. Find a nice line for the cue ball. Looks pretty good, I think. Yeah, very good. So Shano, he's going to pull out the jump cue. This is surprising. I think I would have to kick to the right side rail here. Carl, what do you think? I mean, the jump here doesn't look that great to me. Yeah, I mean, I thought he was just bringing his jump cue with him. Oh, he's going back for his cue, yeah. I thought he was just going to do it to save a bit of time, but... Right. I think as he's come round, he's realized, well, the kick is, is more than achievable. Yeah, I want to kick two rails behind this ball. Now, the one thing is the six is maybe, maybe cutting off if he hits it well, you know, the movement on the one up table, but still should get in behind this okay. Gonna need a little love here. He's nice. gonna need a little love. Extension, please. Spotted a few good balls so far. Lotvi in this match. Needs another nice one here. Wow. Uh, he's fired it into the bottom <coughs> jaw and it stayed up. Yeah, the first two days, I think that falls. Uh, just like the three ball that, that Pia missed uh, in game number three against Mario He. It wasn't hit perfectly, but we've seen similar shots fall, right? So. Yeah, I mean, as a pool kind of ex-player. I don't want to see them fall, but right. I know what you're saying. They, they have been falling. Shane will know how big this rack is now. Huge. Whenever your opponent misses a ball and you you punish them, that's when it really hurts. Yeah, Shane will want to get out here and put a few more racks together like he did to separate himself there for a moment. Thorsten Holman at the table and a 5-1 lead as well over Ruiz. Shane's not happy with this shot. He's just felt like he's got a little bit too much into it. Does he let the draw stroke out here and come all the way to the top rail and back out for the six? Not a terrible way to play this. Yeah, he has a lot of Q power. Oh, oh cut it a little seven. much. Seven. Okay, big moments coming up now. Didn't want to hit this seven. There you see, hit it full. Can he still cut this ball in? Definitely can. can. Yeah. It is thin. Cue ball's going to be going off four rails. Watch the eight. Watch hitting the eight. Oh, 
did he overcut that? I, yeah, I, th I thought yeah. he made it, and I just started watching the cue ball. No, he overcuts it. Well, this is the biggest rack of the match so far. This is into the 12th rack, and can lock the pot this six and get on the seven. Nice. He's gone in a little thick, but it's okay. What's he faced with here, JJ? Well, he's he's faced with he's pretty full here, and the thing is, he's okay to get on the eight, but speed control is going to matter. He doesn't want to get too thin, whether he's on one side of the eight or the other. Thin is not what he wants. This looks okay. Uh, yeah, he's all right. He was off the uh, still a little touchy. But. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It's that little touch. Well, I think he's okay. Oh, he's playing it with a flat cue, so. I think he still has his extension. No, he's used it, so he's got to get on with it. Now he's elevating the cue, so watch out. Missable ball. Wow, that go-in spin right there. Oh, they're, they're not nice to see, though, are they? They're the balls that should be staying up. That's where the pressure comes in and the, the better cue ball, but it's gone in and this nine to tie the match up. And Shane's the type that isn't going to get upset about that eight ball. He saw kind of, you know, wiped his feet, right? Yeah, Denmark's Baron Lotfi, 6-6, six, six, and we've got his World Cup partner with our man, Michael Bridge. Thanks, Carl. Yes, got Mickey Cross here. Mickey, just starting on you first. You're out of the tournament, but you played well. Uh, I played unreal, actually, but it's sometimes it's hard because if your opponent gets the break, he can just keep like the like he can keep the control, and there's nothing really to do about it because he got the first uh, four, I got the next seven, and then he got the next seven, and and I couldn't really get to the table. So. Frustrating, obviously, then, but you've got many tournaments this year on the nine ball series to, to, to look to, to go forward and to look forward to. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I look forward to it. I'm playing the UK Open and it's going to be a lot of fun. Good. And fingers crossed, maybe the World Cup of Paul. Yeah, I hope so. That could be awesome because uh, Baram, he's a good player and yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, you, you know you know him well. He's, he's a good friend of yours. He's obviously playing Shane. They've never played each other before, but he, he's doing very well out there. Yeah. It looked like it. He, he seemed confident and it was a little hard in, on the last shot he got there, but uh, Rack, he still get it. 13. He still gets through it. So. Yeah, Mickey, thanks for joining us. Yes, evenly poised. Let's go back to table one. Mr. Luffy. Thank you, break. guys. Mickey Krause, very talented young player. Unfortunately, he's out of this year's event, but we will be seeing him again. He's got a bright future. Decided to take the game serious. He's now full time, Mickey Kraus. And he's a very, very dangerous player. Lofty to break it, 6 6. Big mistake from SVB in the last one. Oh, terrible kiss on the cue ball there by the red three ball. Yeah, I like what I've seen from Mickey. He's putting a lot of time, putting a lot of matches. If he's not, you know, at the tournament watching matches or practicing or in, in a match, he's at the pool room. Trying to improve his game, so. Filler's looking to take a lead over there on table number two. That's yeah, eight to eight with Filler. that jump pretty well Just barely missed the pocket Carl yeah the only saving race for Lotfi is this purple five there could be a little bit of action down bottom left of the table take another look air ball just fights into the top jaw yeah, you kind of figure with the pink four near that SVB will figure Tension out a please. way to open that 5 6. Just 
It's all about this five ball now. Yeah, he's still going to get on this three, but it should be okay. It's decision time for Shane. Speed control here, falling on the pink four. How he wants to get into that five six. It's not going to work, JJ. Yeah, can't even at a soft speed. He can't get a little piece of it. I guess I thought maybe. Well, I think yeah. I think it's just overcutting it to the certain part of the pocket. I think he gets a little no, bit of that. Fine, yeah. yeah. Getting a little excited in here. Yeah, don't be pulling against my man now, oh, Carl. It's like you're the America this in the comments. <laughs> well, Niels Fan and the man from Vietnam in a 7 7 battle there. Eagle Eye up 8 to 4. I believe it's 9 8 filler on table number 2. Omar Al Shaheen's playing in the distance. Obviously, last year's finalist. Yeah, he's took these well as Shane. There was a little awkward, wasn't there? He's had to play a couple of neat shots, and this is going to be a nice finish for SVB to. Gain that one rack lead before the break. And there Welcome back. 14. Current score 7 6 in favor of Mr. Van Boning. Mr. Van Boning to break. To the 2022 Whirlpool Championships. SVB to break. Wow, look at this. Where's the two ball going? That's going to be his next ball. And it's awkward. That was powerful. Well, I said it earlier that you'll see Shane make the one in the side a little more often than the rest of really the tournament itself, right? He really unloads trying to make as many as possible. Feels like make more balls, less track. No matter which ball he's shooting at, most likely he's got something to work with. Or you'll see a lot of players really trying to control the one a little bit more in some manner. Like the two rails here with the cue ball, it seems like the two ball won't get that safe to me if you try to cut the two much. If the eight went there, he would certainly play a heavier safety off the two, kind of putting the two underneath the three, four, and the cue ball floating one rail behind the nine. But touchy little shot, I think. Tension call. Looks like it's a simple safety, but the problem is, like a few games ago, if he leaves his opponent, Lotfi, any kind of look at the two, it's probably going to be a pretty easy return safety. So, it's just a little different level of pool we're at here at the World Pool Champ. I kind of like this 
play right here, even though I don't think he was trying to make it. I think he was trying to double bank it safe, kind of like, right? Yeah, because it doesn't look like the three goes, does it? Yeah, just trying to play off that other side right up back That's over right. to the top. And I think he just felt like he was going to have better control on the cue ball getting into this in rail that way. So I don't know where he's going with this shot. Is he just banking it back down, going into the pink with the cue ball? Eef. I think that was always going to be a little suspect. Not good. Not good at all. <coughs> just hard to, to really you know, predict the outcome there. Attention, please. Nice stroke there. Yeah, he's got to like this. Yeah, the cue ball's found its way onto the side rail. Yeah, but he wouldn't want to shoot that three ball over. Got a lot of cue action. It's just got to roll this. Watch out, eight ball. Okay, he's all right. Uh, a little funny cueing again. He's got a little the left side of the cue ball, though, so that'll help. Signal and he wants the cue ball to bounce there with his cue. He's fine. He's still in this match. He's hanging on. SVB's made a few mistakes. I right, had enough angle to easily move the cue ball, so definitely the right shot there. Seven seven JJ. Wow. Well, this man from Denmark has uh, has probably made the tougher shots in the match between the two players. Uh, nothing taken away from Shane, but Lofty's really done what it's what it takes to stay in the match and compete with uh, you know a top five player in the world, right? Yeah, Joshua Filler, he's been in a battle for a good hour there on table two. If you've been watching that on the Matchroom Pool YouTube channel, you will have seen Sanjin Pilovanovic. Well, he had the lead quite a lot in that match, but Filler has come through and he will be delighted to get through to the last 32. A light stroke and a little smirk there from from filler kind of let up on it a little bit but nevertheless Pia is delighted as well unfortunately she's out of the tournament but her husband well he's through rack number 15 Big names at Advancing We're currently here tied seven three. games apiece. Mr. Lofty to break. He's been breaking good. Let's bar up. Yeah, and on table two, we have a, another American by the name of Shane. That'll be Shane Wolford about to tee off in this final 64. I'll tell you, the one's tracking. A little kiss on it. Now nah, the cue ball got a little elevated here. I don't know if the two passes so easily by the seven. You were just talking about another Shane there, Shane Wolford. What's his game like, JJ? I've never seen him play. 
All right, he's super solid. He's been putting in the time. And uh, I love his demeanor at the table for a young man. He really, you know, seems like he keeps the mind kind of quiet, doesn't get too involved emotionally. And uh, he's the one who, you know, had a big win over Arcady in the qualification round. Extension, please. Okay, all ball foul, so John Lehman will be on top of this and very elevated here, right? He doesn't have to get that elevated, it didn't look like, but pretty accurate even so. Yeah, he's made it. He's got a tight two ball, but he's got the nice natural angle to get to the short side of the three, right? Yeah, that looks pretty good. He can draw this over or go forward with the cue ball. It's kind of preference. And he used a bit of the rail, but I think that was needed. Uh, that's perfect. Yeah. Big, big, uh, big favorite to take a lead here late in the match at eight to seven. Got to stay focused, of course. He's going to have a little bit of a stretch here. near the rail now over the side pocket so that helps Just fine. Yeah, he's a little close to his work. Maybe he didn't want to be drawing it that close to the eight, but as it's happened, it's not a bad little angle, this. And he's done well this here, hasn't he? Because Shane won five racks on the spin earlier on. Well, he's going to rest near the rail. It held up, though, so Lotfi should. Take a lead here at eight to seven, and he's broke the balls. Great, right? I mean, so yeah, you don't expect has. that to change. He has broke the balls well, and he's played well. He's going to be feeling it now. Can he do the unthinkable and knock SVB out of this tournament? A former world champion, U.S. Open champion, Joshua Filler, is in the studio with Mr. Michael Bridge. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. <laughs> He's a guy, isn't he? Um, Joshua, many congratulations beating Sanyin Perlohanovic. It was tight throughout the match, but you pulled through at the end. Yeah, he played actually perfect. He missed just one ball and all said I didn't miss the ball. It was 11-8. It was just a pity that someone from us has to go home, but this is the format, and uh, yeah, I'm looking for the next one. I'm looking forward to it. Um, you, you play Sanyin quite a lot on the, on the European tour, don't you? So. He's, he's got a great future, but you know he, he can have the odd mistake, which you punish. Yeah, you have to do it. I mean, everyone who's in the last 64 are going to punish you for every mistake you do. Sometimes he doesn't, then you're lucky, but you expect your opponent to maybe then run a few wrecks and then you're behind. I was 6-3 behind and fought back, and uh, I'm just glad that I did it. Mark Boyce to Bosch next, and another player you know well. Yeah, of course. Uh, we also play in the same uh, club in Germany, so uh, we're good friends as well, but... Uh, we are not friends in the match next. That's what we love about you, Josh. <laughs> That's the killer in you. So Joshua Filler through to the round of 32 after beating Sanyin Perlohanovic. Yeah, Kirill, a killer. He is. He's Our through to the last 32. To seven. Another big name to in make favor it. of Mr. Latvi. So Latvi to break. Yeah, Shane's in a bit of trouble here now. It is that extended race to 11 now with the final 64, but... So still a bit of work for for Lotfi, but 
Shane not liking the position that he has to sit in the chair and wait for his fate with this man's uh, either mistake or, or no mistake going on to maybe win this match. One going to open up. No, the seven's going to be a bit in the way, it looks like. Ayuki Oi, I believe, is up eight to four over Oscar Dominguez. Another guy doesn't get talked. He gets talked about enough, but he doesn't get talked about enough with his game. That being Oi, right? Really kind of started to show the world what he's all about when it comes to, to playing the great game of nine ball. Last year with a top four finish in the U.S. Open. Some other top finishes. So, little soft safety here, Carl. Just make sure you get the hook. Oh, that's a little light, huh? It's close. Yeah, he has got the hook. Well, that's all you can do there. Yeah, I mean, you sat right behind it so I can yeah. see it. So Shane's got to be kicking at this. And I like that, even though you know you're not getting ball in hand, most likely, at least make Shane go to the rail and have to execute some type of nice kick shot. You're up eight to seven. The, you know who the pressure's on. Extension, please. Now, this is the type you can't get in behind it, so you have to actually play for a piece of the ball here, whether it be soft or hard. Does it go in the side? Does I think it, it does. The corner as well, so. Now here's the decision. Do you just stop there and play the kiss shot on the three, or do you go forward for the two-three combo? The kiss shot's a pretty easy shot, right? Just laying up below the eight. So. Yeah, now he's got to put a pretty thin hit on the two, and so the two ball's going to have a lot of speed coming off this three ball. Where's the two finished? Has it gone behind the eight? Somewhat. Yeah, he's lost control of it, hasn't he? I'll tell you, a guy we haven't talked about much is Chang Jung Lin, right? A guy that's kind of like has never gone through the tournament without being talked about you know, or talked as little about as Thank he has please. this week. And he's doing his thing over there. About to be up seven to three. Yeah, he's playing Elliot Sanderson, the young kid from uh, from England. It was a tough draw for Elliot. He's had a tough route in this year's World Championships, but he's still in there now. What's Shane got here? And he's just got a little top side of the two here, if any. If he can't hit much of this two ball, that side pocket point is a is a big one. Uh, he can get quite a bit of it. So should be able to get past the side here coming down the table. He may leave a long shot for Lotfi though. Yeah, I'd love this cue ball to weld on the rail. What a shot that is. Yeah, that's that's excellent, really. Yeah, that's his best shot of this match for me. Speed was key there. Had to get a good cue ball. You could see how close the cue ball was to the side pocket, and then it just comes and rests on the bottom rail. Now you can see an edge of this. Is there going to be a gap? Is there going to be a gap for Shane? There isn't. He's have to go airborne here, I believe. Two ball is near the pocket, so you would fancy him. You would back him to make the two. It's all about can he control the cue ball? Maybe just get the cue ball over to the left side of the table. And he's only going over a portion of the nine, so really, I, I like his chances here to run out. Well controlled, very well controlled. Under the gun as well, eight seven down in a race to eleven. Wasn't just making the ball; it was purposely played with the cue ball to get it over to the left. This is a little tester. He's 
pass this test as well. He's perfectly in line on the five now. Just a hint of an angle that leads him towards the seven. Where's the cue ball going? Is it okay? Uh, that camera angle fooled me a little bit because you know, it was so close to the balls. Yeah, hard to get perspective sometimes on those. Well, Shane uh, should get it to eight to eight. Of course, making balls in the break has not been an issue. Just a matter of getting those shots after the break. Yeah, this has been this has been good from Shane. It wasn't the most difficult of jump shots, but it was about the cue ball control. And that's what's going to give him this eighth rack to tie the match up. Eight racks all. It's now a short race to three. SVB's under serious pressure here. We've got a bit of outside table action. It's coping Yi. He's won this title before. He knows how to get it done. Really love his game. 11 2 over Michael Gavniak. Gavniak actually beat Jason Shaw in the in the bracket on day two, I believe it was, maybe one. Yeah, day one it was at night. He beat Shaw, but he's now out. Coping ye, the big hitters. Well, the the they're going through JJ. Can have some good matchups, aren't we? Oh yeah. Yeah, Thorsten Homan puts another win on his side. He has a huge lead. I believe it's maybe nine to three over Reese. I'll check that score. Three for Bracket Thorsten, of course, 8-8 eight, eight We're here. currently tied at eight games apiece. Mr. Van Boning to break. Niels Fyans got himself on the hill. He's been in a battle. Of course, we've not seen him on table one yet. Now, does the two cut? Well, even if it does cut, how does he get on the three? Yeah, the eight's covering up the cross side bank, which may be an option, you know, just in case it was open, but... I don't know what I do here. You thin this two ball on the right side and just go behind the pink right here and take, try and take the snooker that way? Yeah, I mean, the six ball's making it awkward, isn't it? To yeah, the... yeah, the six and the five, right? So I'm not sure what else really he has. I think that's about it. Just shaving off the top side of the two here. His right side of the two, lightly. Uh, the two came out a little hot with the cue ball as well. He's not going to be happy with that. I think he's supposed to shoot at this some kind of way. Whether it be a, a two, six, five combo or two into the side rail trying to make the five. Safety. Not bad, though. I think Shane's just got to softly bank the two back up the middle of the table and just kind of coast behind the seven. You're not going to play the two all the way back down, but. Extension, please. I love the shot clock. I wish I would have played most of my career with the shot clock, even though I wasn't the fastest player, but I just like the pressure of the shot clock. You didn't look, look like you looked at the Moscow <laughs> Cup, oh, JJ. Uh, <laughs> you set me up a treat. Yeah, there, you're right, you're right. Straight in. <laughs> I uh, set him up straight in. As soon as you yeah. started like saying it, I thought, oh, oh, I've got him here. I've got you him were waiting for that, that weak <laughs> moment of mine, weren't you? I can I can leave now, right, Carl? You're you're satisfied. I can uh, go. That was brilliant. Yeah, I gotta watch what I say around here. <laughs> yeah, 
maybe that's my defense. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't play my entire career with the shot clock. Uh, beautiful safety there from Shane, though, at a big moment. Extension, please. Next time, I'll, I'll make sure I make my way over next time at, for, at my own expense for your laughs. I can't see the screen. My eyes are watering. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm laughing. Oh. A bit of fun here on day three. All business for these two in the arena, though. Hard to get a rail with this kick shot. You just don't having to put that much spin. You just don't don't get that much foul, speed on no it, contact. right? Ball in hand. Start the clock, please. Okay, he's got a. I think he's just drawing between the four and the three. I think. Yeah. Smart shot. Could have used a little more bounce, though. This isn't good. Can he get around the seven with the top inside? Or does he have to stun this heavily? Yeah, there's the answer to your question. It's been an interesting matchup this so far. Shared the first 16 racks. Well, no matter what it is you want, it never comes easy, right? So Shane should get that 9 8 lead here, and we'll see what happens on the break shot there in the game number 18. I don't really see any problems here. Interesting way he played that. Most would just flick off the left side of that with a hair of roll, roll your ball kind of, right? And now he's got a, yeah, he's fine, but he's just got to float the, float the ball a little bit. And the funny thing is he could have floated the last one and been in a perfect position. Yeah. Well, he, he went two rails. I, I don't. Mm. Oh, wow, yeah. Is it? I think the overhead made it look a little thinner than what we thought. But I still thought he could have just... Rolled it, right? Yeah, yeah just, just trusting it. But he's actually been fortunate here, to be honest. Yeah. Crashing into that eight could have been a lot worse. Yeah, if he catches the eight thin, he could come across and get behind the nine. He just happened to catch the eight nice and full. Yeah, and he just breathes that sigh of relief because he knows this should have been a lot more comfortable than what it's been. But the main thing is he's going to win this rack, and that's all that matters. It doesn't matter how it looks. to eight in favor of Mr. Van Boning. Mr. Van Boning to break. And it's SVB who's playing on center stage. He leads Baron Lock for nine, eight. Oh, the cue ball's traveling. You never know where it's going to finish up. Now, surely he's got to take the bank on here. Two balls over the pocket. Shoots at this, JJ? I think so. I mean, he, he does have to cut it a little bit. It's not like, I don't think it's sitting just dead natural, but I don't really see anything that's like a, a safety that you're just going to be in love with. Oh, it's laying better than I thought. So should put a little draw stroke here. A lot of draw stroke. Wow. Yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't good for Shane, really. I fancied him for that, especially in the moment of the match to get on the hill. Yeah, 
And really, Lotfi has played a, a really solid match with the open shots. So expect him to get to that position. We'll see what he does from the five to the six. That's the real work, and then back over for the seven. But this one, two, and four shouldn't be a problem. Attention, please. You can only presume there's a bit of chalk on the cue ball where he was about to hit. Okay, kind of important where he gets here on this pink four to get on the five properly. Like if he gets above this too much where it's a little thin, he's okay. Just a little one rail angle here. Now let's see how still he's staying. Body movement, but doesn't want to be straight. No, and he's gotten pretty straight. And if he's falling a little towards the long rail, this could get difficult quickly. He had a big win and a, a player he's never beaten before. That was Chris Melling, right, to get into this final 64. So I think there was pressure in that match, which is helping things here. Uh, is that enough? Is that enough speed? Looked a little bit light. That's the type of ball under pressure you could overcut, believe it or not. I just hit it sweet. And really, I don't know his game, but I don't think he's been very off with his stroke, just taking a little guess. It looks like it's the timing he's wanted and pretty fluid. Yeah, he's a good player. He said that at the start. Kind of felt Shane wasn't going to have it his own way unless he got off to a really good start himself. And Lotfi has shown him he's going to have to beat him. 9-9, nine, nine. it's now a race to two. These racks are fast disappearing. And we're in for an exciting finish here on centre court. The match action going on here on day three. Thorsten Holman, he's won this tournament twice. I mean, you wouldn't think so after that shot, but he has. It's 10-4, that is a healthy lead in a race to 11 against He's not ranked number one, but he's number one on the live rankings. I'll explain a little bit more about the live rankings in a moment. Yeah, he won the Derby City Classic nine ball. Did Sanchez Ruiz. That was the first event of the, the rankings that's going to go towards 2023. Sounds a little bit complicated, but basically match room. Well, we've got more events. They've created their own ranking system. Nine games apiece. So good news for Sanchez is he's kind of like the main man to qualify for Team Europe at the minute. But obviously right. there's only been one event. Oh, he's in a good spot, right? <laughs> so yeah, he's up even, there. He's even up though there. he's not in a good spot as of right now in the 2022 World Pool Championships, Thorsten Holman, I wouldn't call it a flashback. He's been working on his game just like Darren and a few others. But ooh, our dry break. From nowhere at 9-9, nine, nine, just you don't expect it. Now, each player has had a dry break now, and just something, you know, the way we've seen the balls break, we've kind of forgotten about that possibility, right? Yeah, the template that we use should guarantee the wing ball, but you've still got to put them on that template correctly, don't you, JJ? Yeah, that's right. There is a 
you know, possibility of, I hate to say human error, but human involvement, right? So this is a funny little safety as well. He can't quite get behind the five with the cue ball easily and move the one across the table. He may play the one underneath the five and the four and maybe come back with the cue ball behind the six, maybe. That's the shot I see. Floats mildly behind the six. Yeah, broadening the angle a little bit. Did he leave a gap? Well, that would be an unbelievable gap to leave. Right. Enough. He's got a decent kick to the side rail between the four and five. But I think he does have a little ang a little opening between the two and the Attention, six. Please. That's a great camera view there. And the problem with that is if the opening's small. What kind of options? Plus, he's elevated over the eight, Carl. Maybe he can just bank it up towards the nine. And yeah, right. Mm. He's kicking at this. this is, <coughs> well, he's this kicking is... too low, too. This is not going to get it, I don't think. This is going into the five, isn't it? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah that I looks thought, way uh, low, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we get, we're only getting the TV view, but I was with you. That was strange, that. Yeah, that looked way off. At least a diamond, maybe, That's right? Fun, the nerves can get you in that regard as well. There's a little bit of the table you're not used to, but I think Carl and I both recognize that that was going to be quite a bit off. Yeah, I still think shooting through the gap and just leave it long for Shane at this stage of the match would probably have been a better option, but wasn't to be, and Shane will be delighted to get ball in hand. And, you know, it's 9-9 nine, nine race, so I think you want to get on the hill first and break, and this is a huge, huge moment now. Yeah, did he, I was going to say, did he get much angle to work with here, get back on the pink? Does he have to draw between the six and the five, or is he following behind the seven right here? Yeah, I was going to say, I may draw this ball right here. I don't know. I hate to, the slick table to me is a little harder to predict when you're following the ball off of a full angle like this. Yep, agree. Kind of spins a little funny off that short rail, doesn't it? Yeah, it doesn't take much to lose your accuracy. I, I like him cheating the pocket here and just drawing on a straight line to the short side myself. Yeah, if this was a club table, he'd have topped this shot already and, and missed the seven, but wait for the seven. Oh, he's played it well, JJ. He's yeah, played it well. He sure has. Very calm coming by the seven as well. That way the cue ball held this line really nicely. Now nothing to it here, just one rail up, nice and heavy on the five with the six over the opposite side. Yeah, he's navigated okay here. Yeah. He's looking good. the pocket a little bit here. No big deal. Good rack in the end. Things <laughs> started to get a little bit, a little bit scary. Now he would have liked the cue ball out a little bit more, but that's just the stage of this match where this nine ball to get on the hill. Uh, it's there, JJ, SVB. He's in double figures, 10-9. And he's going to be breaking. I'll tell you, I keep watching, trying to pay attention to the Americans, of course. 8-3 down, Oscar Dominguez has won five. How do you say it on the spin, right? Now 8-8 eight eight with Naiki Oi. 
on the spin. You know, another guy that, you know, quite have the titles of a Darren Appleton or Niels Feyen, but a guy that's trying to get his game back. You know, a few years ago, of course, a family man now bought a really nice room. How yeah. about Sanchez Ruiz? He was down big in this. What score was he down? 10-2, I think. 10-2. Look at this. He's still in this. He plays quick. He gets on with it. He breaks big. He can switch the pressure back over to Thorsten Holman. Can he do the unthinkable and come back in that match? Well, I was watching him, you know, Ruiz as he was sitting in the chair a lot of this match, right? And I loved the way he was just keeping focus, waiting for any opportunity. So, Masato, another great player from Japan. Good to see Shane Wolford here at the World Championships, though. It's, um, it's nice to see a lot of Americans entering the tournament. Usually we just used to see Shane and, on the hill. and Skylar yeah. Woodward. Then Billy started to travel. There's a few more now. This is what just the captain wanted. Is he going to have a shot? Where's the four ball going? Where is the pink four ball going? Oh, did the rack, the template slow down the pink four from crossing over? I think it did. You see Shane raising the head, raising the hand, excuse me. Now, what would have happened there if Mr. Lehman would have spotted that might happen and he'd have grabbed the rack quickly? quickly. I think they have a policy with the referees Look. not not to do any of that. Oh, See wow. that right there? Wow. It's the only hang up in the template as a whole anyways. So you're saying the ref could have grabbed it quick? No, I think they have a policy probably to where they're not supposed to mess with the rack until the balls settle. Yeah, that would make sense. But as you said, them templates, you don't see it, but now and again, that they do, you know, it can roll off it. Sometimes it's the cue ball. And yeah. So he would have had a shot on the one. He'd have had a shot to pop the one. Yeah, a very makeable kick shot. If he can get a little bit above the nine here with a touch of spin, it's the type of shot these players feel pretty confident on kicking this in. Attention, please. Yeah, I just hope for the sake of Shane that that doesn't cost him. You know, I, I, I would like to see him have some more shots after that. I want to, I want to see a man lose a match like that. That would be, well, that would be cruel. Well, you're supposed to bet against uh, the making this kick shot, but I wouldn't want to. I just get the feeling that this is going to get made and he's going to run out. That's what I felt like anyways. Yeah, he was a big favorite. He's going to have a shot at this SVB, though, so he can forget about the template. It's not going to cost him the match. All you want is a chance to win any match, and this is his chance. Well, you know, the difference between Shane is he tries to shoot shots more of his preference me myself like right here i don't mind floating this in with a little right english coming around the nine for the two in the side the right middle side pocket he doesn't like to add as much side spin from distance Extension, like please. some other players will but so he's looking at more of a natural cut on the one some kind of way and getting position maybe going four rails for the two in the lower left maybe yeah he probably prefers to put a bit more of a stroke on it because right. it's got such a powerful cue action yeah, but this isn't hard to really flick in with a little right English and come, like I said, for the two in the right middle side pocket. Well, he's bearing up this with power, I believe. Oh, he's going to run into him. He's going to run into him. Ooh, he got by it. Now, what's he got? What's the angle like? Yeah, it might be okay. Can he play a natural? Can he just pot the two in the center? I think so. It definitely has a portion of the pocket, if not all of it. Yeah, cue ball's going to miss the nine and watch the scratch. He's got a little window off the short rail. Yeah, that's worked out a treat. It really has. Yeah, he's got to play one more really kind of shot with a little bit of a deft touch. I don't know if the four goes by the nine. He's going to have to come across the seven, maybe. Look, I thought the four, the nine covered up the four to the lower left. Oh, no, he's got the lower left, so this should be okay. Just pull the ball up the side rail a little bit. This looks okay. The six ball might 
play a little part. It's not done. It's rolled far enough. That's good. It's real good now. He's got these remaining five balls. Should just stun this by the seven a little bit, right? He's got enough angle. No reason to really follow the ball or anything. Just a little light stun. Is he going to draw back? Okay. It's a little preference, I guess. Draw back to the head string. Maybe. Well, look at this shot. Did you expect that? He's going to get thin on this from nowhere. I don't know. I don't know the reason why that no, was the shot. I can't believe he's played that shot. I really yeah, can't. He could have stunned six or eight inches to the left of the seven and had a very natural. Yeah, well, if he's going to play that shot, just play it a little softer. Yeah, go lighter. Yeah. 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 I think he's okay. We're probably over egging it, but <laughs> just when I seen the cue ball start flying around the table, I was like, what? <laughs> Well, Massive maybe things. so, but we, you know, we look at long term, right? I mean, yeah. long term, you, you, you could make a mistake in that situation that could he, cost he, you. He thought the same because he was smiling, wasn't he? Yeah. You know? He'll be so delighted just to get this match out of the way. He's not been on his A game. He's played some good stuff. But he's made a few little errors. And he'll just be glad to get through to the next round. Forget about it. Lotfi's put up a great performance. It's been a good match. But it's SVB who looks like he's going to take it. He needs this simple nine ball to book.